Hi friends, Richard here from Forsyth Video. Uh, it's been a while, got something kind of interesting, got a perfectly fine Epiphone uh, to check out. Well, maybe not perfectly fine. It's kind of had a bit of an accident. Uh, yeah, my buddy had, uh, his son had this guitar and he was, had it on the old strap button here and he was playing it and it slipped and it hit the floor, which is something I think we can all relate to. But uh, I don't know that we can all relate to a break this fierce. I mean, this is a sassy ass break right here. It's got some. Uh... <laughs> it's, it's that's that's a righteous break. Um, so let me I'm gonna go ahead and take this body off and get it out the way. There's a little crack here in the body too. We'll glue that up separate. Let's uh, get this body out the way. Get these strings cut and take a look at exactly what we're dealing with. Got a little helper as always. Decided he wanted to sit right in front of the camera. Thanks, buddy. Alright guys, with Coconut's assistance, uh, obviously we were able to get this neck off and we were able to get the strings off. So we can finally take a look at just how bad this is. And this is almost... This whole section is almost a veneer. It's like maybe two to three times as thick as your regular veneer would be. Um, so gluing that down is not going to add a lot of structure back to the neck, a lot of strength. This is the chunk right here that is going to give us our strength. And it breaks all the way up through the front. Check this out too. It says uh, special one, weak, one eight. 1-1-2-3-0-2-5-17-S7 or S1 down on the bottom. I don't know what most of that means other than that's the model, but uh, that's pretty cool that uh, that's in there. So yeah, it's a special Epiphone Special 1, not a Special 2. So yeah, we've also got this piece we've got to worry about gluing in, this little flappy bit here. Hey, coconut. So that's going to be fun. So I'm going to get a bunch of clamps I'm going to I think we'll go ahead and take these tuners off and we may end up wrapping this neck after we get the squeeze out taken care of but uh, we'll get to there in just a second let's see all right so we've got our tuners off and our uh, neck is completely apart there's lots of cracks up here on the front but I want to show you a, a interesting development here watch this okay See how it moves? Look at that. <laughs> the nut split as well. And it's an Epiphone, so it's just a plastic one. So, you know, <laughs> there goes a piece. So we may just glue, glue this back together for him, but more likely I'll replace it because I think it broke right at where a slot is. So we'll see, uh, see what happens with that. I can't stress enough the importance of putting all your little pieces into a bag and marking that bag so that you don't lose it. All right, let's take a look at the back here real quick. You can see it's uh, very, very floppy. <laughs> and the front, yeah, see how close it is to just peeling right off. It's, it's bad. I was just shocked uh, when this, when I saw this, this, on Facebook, my friend posted a picture of uh, this sticking out, you know, and he had the story about his son dropping it. And uh, I just said, hey, man, bring it to me. You know, we'll fix it for cost. Whatever the materials cost, we'll fix it. And uh, I told him about 40 bucks, and he already tipped me higher than that because he's good people. So I just want to get this working for his son again, maybe get it looking a little better. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think it'll work. So let's get to... I'm going to investigate this a bit more and then we'll glue up the neck. I like to use tight bond too. One of the great things about it is you have a quite long open time on it so you can work it quite a bit. And uh, even more so if you add a little bit of water. Now I'm not doing much. I'm, uh, I'm mixing up a little bit of water with some glue just so that I can get it way up in there into these cracks in the crack way up into the headstock here. But the rest is just going to be brute force. We're going to put as much glue as we can. So we're going to get a lot of squeeze out and it's going to be messy but uh, that's part of the fun there and um, 
Normally, I would use a small paintbrush to get it up in there, but because I have a coconut in this house, my cat, who likes to run off with all my small paintbrushes, I'm going to use this behemoth to cram it up in there as best I can. And the uh, water will evaporate. It'll help to pull the glue solids up in there. It'll be a good bond. And if you look in here carefully, I taped off the truss rod just to prevent as much glue as I can get uh, as I can from getting on there. And I tried to get it in such a way where I can reach through the hole later with some pliers and pull that tape out. Okay, so fun part. Let's get to gluing. Let's make a big mess and then let's clean it up and get to clamping. So I'm going to load my brush. So I'm going to move my hand here. I'll shove the bristles way up in there, try to get as much of this really extra damp glue in there as I can. And uh, then we're going to go over top of it with some thicker stuff. And the capillary action of the wood itself will help to pull the glue in there. That is the hope anyway. Most of my clamps are going to be focused up here. And I have a nice smattering of them. And uh, you'll see how we're going to deal with this long strip. Because obviously clamps would just be all different directions. And even if I had a good clamping call, I couldn't guarantee the edges of this thing be clamped down as tight as I would want it to. All right, super thick, messy glue now. You can see it spread out once it hits that water. It goes all the way down to about three inches from the uh, actual neck pocket, which is just such a, such a crazy break. I have seen some wild breaks in my time, but nothing like that. You guys ever broke a uh, headstock or your neck on your guitar? How was it? Let me know in the comments uh, how you dealt with it. Now we're going to do a couple rounds of chasing squeeze out. Press this guy down a little bit. Centering it is going to be a nightmare, but we'll get there. Yeah, here we go. See, all this glue just coming out these cracks here. Got some in the truss rod cavity. Even before I get much pressure on there, we're already squeezing out a bunch of glue. Which also, you don't need to do a whole lot of pressure because you'll end up squeezing out too much glue and you won't get a good bond. Let's see what the other side's doing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely brute force the glue here. I'm going to actually take this clamp off. So you can see what I'm doing to get the most uh, even pressure I can across this awkwardly shaped crack. I've got all my clamps up where we need it, but I am running this string with about 3 8 inch gap in between each loop all the way down this crack. And the good thing about doing this is the frets themselves on the other side of the board actually help hold the thread in place, keep it from sliding back and forth. You can see we're squeezing out some stuff. And uh, don't worry, you know, some of the string is going to glue itself to the crack. That's fine. Uh, we'll be sanding it all down later anyway. 
but rather than fighting with a thousand clamps, we're going to fight with this stupid string. <laughs> you can just see it squeezing out. And I'm working my way down this way because I want to push the grain as far into it as I can and uh, get as much glue into that grain as well. And if I were to wrap from the bottom of the neck up, there's a chance that I would bow some of that grain that way and we don't want to do that. I know a lot of you guys are like, Richard, it's just the cheap Epiphone Special 1. Why would you worry about fixing it? Just get the kid another one. Yeah, a lot of a lot of folks would do that. And for the most part, I agree with that. But at the same time, this is his guitar. You, know, you can get another guitar, sure, but this one's his. Okay, my friends, it's now the next morning. i got coconut literally over my shoulder helping me out here. <clears throat> I actually got to go to work in a little bit, but I figured I would go. I figured I would go ahead and take this guy out of the clamps. Okay, so while it's obviously uh, still very noticeable, this actually glued up very well. Um, going to definitely take some sanding, but this is uh, pretty nicely glued back together. Looks like we got all our big cracks sealed in here. No gaps. They obviously have, you know, this is all the damage to the front that uh, is still visible. We'll sand all that back. Um, this whole front, you know, the, the back is wood grain. You can see where the original headstock was glued here. But the back, you can see this sort of translucent wood grain through. But the front is flat black. So I'm going to get this tape out. You see where that tape comes through from where we covered up our truss rod. I'm going to try my best to get as much of that tape out as I can. And... <clears throat> We're going to start removing stickers and sanding and whatnot. Alright, so I've got most of my sanding done here, but there are a few little spots where some of the grain has pulled away which happens when you glue up a, a big old crack like that and uh, they're pretty uh, shallow so we're going to just use a little bit of wood filler and I have stainable natural colored wood filler because uh, when I stain this neck it should be exactly what we need now this isn't super high build stuff um, you can get wood filler that has full-on fibrous pieces in it if you have bigger stuff to fill or you want to get that look out of it but that's not necessary here so I'm just going to squish real hard get it right up in there you don't need a whole lot and anywhere that you have possible splits like right here up at the top there's a little bit of I think it's just visible glue but just in case I want to get some Get some of the stuff in there. And then you have to let the stuff dry for a little while. In this case, let's see. It's uh, two to six hours. Wow, it's a little longer than I thought. But anyway, so generally you only have to do this one, maybe two times, uh, depending on how deep your fills are. This one being pretty shallow and being able to smooth most of it off just like that. Um, I think that's all we're going to have to do. So we will let this stuff dry and we will come back to it here in a little while. Coconut's going to come investigate.
I might be a tad bit late for work. We'll see. Maybe not. But uh, I want to see what this stain is going to do to the wood here in our little patch section. Now, I'm just going to rub it in. Now, you should wear gloves. I'm not because I'm just doing a quick test. But uh, probably tonight, I'm just getting a little bit on here. Probably tonight I will throw some gloves on. We want to keep that transparency uh, that it had before. See if we can't match that all right. See all the wood grain behind it and whatnot. Not too worried about the stain getting on the rosewood because rosewood is very oily. And since I'll be sanding in this a little bit anyway, I should be able to get all that off. Alright, so what we want to do, let it set up. For a few minutes, and then we're going to wipe it off. Probably just looks black on camera. It is going to look much darker at first until you can let it set and wipe it off. Got a little on my finger. It'll be alright. So I'll uh, bring you back when I do that. Okay, my friends, it's the evening. I'm home from work. I've done a little bit more um, sanding. And reapplied some of the stain so we've got it looking pretty smooth pretty close to how it was before um, and I'm going to do a little bit of light maybe 600 grit sanding back here just so that the lacquer I cover this with or polyurethane uh, grips I think I'm gonna try some lacquer though but now I want to touch this paint up here so I'll show you how we're gonna do that let me get some new paper towels down and we'll get uh, to work on that. Okay, so doing my final leveling on the headstock here. And there is this spot where the crack had actually made it through the top that has lost a little bit of wood, so we have to fill that. Now, this is going to actually be painted a flat black just to match what it originally was. So normally I would just use some... Uh, glazing spot putty for something it's really really shadow we're talking thousands of an inch it's not much at all but since i don't have that we're going to use our buddy uh the plastic wood putty here same stuff we use on the back it'll work just fine it's paintable but uh normally just because of a quicker drying time i would go with the bondo glazing putty or you can use bondo itself too if you want Now we let that dry and we sand it back flat with our sanding block and uh, we're going to go touch it up a little bit. We have our little uh, recessed area, our little crack filled in here and we're going to do the best we can to feather this paint so that we can save our logos. So I've got my nut slot and fretboard taped off so we don't get paint on them. I'm not worried about paint going around the sides because there's some little nicks and stuff that were previously on the headstock that I'm uh, not going to worry if paint covers those up by any means. But here's what we want to do, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to see from this angle, but if you take a piece of paper and you fold it over sort of in a uh, wing shape like that, instead of getting a hard edge, you'll get a more feathered edge, but it'll also protect your logos there. So what I'm going to do... Actually going to go this way. I'm going to tape off right here on the end of the headstock where I don't want to get paint. Just tape it there. Then going to feather it over right at the area where we do. I'm just sticking a piece of tape on the inside here. Right at the area where we do want to get paint. And then pull it right up to the edge of where we don't want to get paint. Tape that off. Let me go back a little more. And you can adjust the curve by sort of lightly bending down on the paper. And realistically when I'm painting... 
I'm probably going to pull it forward just a bit and just get my edge exactly where I want it, if that makes sense. So let's go throw some paint on this headstock. I think we're ready. Alright, we've had enough time to let our paint dry. Let's uh, have a look at what we got going on here. I think we did okay. Got a little bit, got a little bit of uh, bleed over onto the L, that's okay. Should be able to knock that out with a little bit of, perhaps, maybe just this. Because I didn't, I didn't get, I, there should still be some clear there. Hopefully that'll come off. If not, I can use a little bit of acetone or maybe some 800 grit sandpaper. Because this is going to need to be smoothed out a little bit. And all this needs maybe like a 600 grit sort of scuff on it to be able to hold the uh, clear coat. So, uh, we got our L back right there, okay? I'm going to take this, this is actually 800 grit, but I think it'll do the job fine. And just smooth this out, and then lightly scuff all this. We don't want to ruin our graphics. Anytime you're using spray paint, especially spray cans, you're going to get little tiny particles that stick up just a little bit. That's what we're dealing with here. And then we're going to try something interesting. I have some lacquer that I've never tried before. Should be exactly what we need though. And it's a satin finish, which is what the rest of the guitar has anyhow. So I'm going to do that and I will bring you back here in a minute. Okay, so I've got some interesting uh, lacquer that I want to try. And the original finish had the lacquer, or probably polyurethane in this case, going all the way up over the edge of the fretboard, which is kind of what we want so that the line between the fretboard and the actual edge <clears throat> of the paint is not a raised line, if that makes sense, or in this case, not paint, uh, stain. So what I'm doing is I am taping off the fretboard, but I'm going over each fret carefully so that the clear coat will stop right at the edge. And we'll talk more about the clear coat here in just a second. But I did some touching up, a little bit of finished sanding before the uh, clear, and I think it's going to match up pretty well. Again, it's a satin clear, so should be pretty close to the original finish but yeah this this just takes a little patience and time but the good thing about the lacquer I'm going to use is I should be able to get four or five coats before the night is over and then if I feel that it's not hard enough I'll let it dry for some time let it completely gas off and then coat it with the usual uh, car automotive polyurethane that I like to use but I'm, I, I probably won't need it. I've had this uh, Watco Crystal Clear lacquer sitting in a bath of hot water for about 10 minutes. Now the temperature out here is great. The humidity is too high. So we're going to go a little light. Always wear a mask. Don't be like me.
had every intention of doing a real demo, but uh, they're on their way to pick it up right now, so I don't really have a lot of time. But big bassy cars outside aside it's uh it's doing great so i'm uh, going to show you how this looks in some better lighting and that will be our repair thanks for watching everybody hope you have a good uh holiday Remember that crack went from up here to almost, almost the end of the neck. So I think we did a pretty alright job, fellas. We know what you think in the comments. And have you ever had to deal with one of these big old break like break like that? But uh, I think they're going to be pretty happy, which makes me happy. So I will see everybody next time.